Kentucky. Enemy of those who make him an enemy. Friend of those who have no friends. Yes, sir. That's Boston Blackie, and he's quite a guy. Forget this, Dave. You were right there with the car, the clothes, and the plane ticket. Oh, oh excuse me. Want one of these? Yeah. Thanks, Barney. It's been rugged on the outside with you and the pen, Barney. Real rugged. Oh, I picked up a contract here and there, but it's no living. I had to shout four boys in an old aim to get the door to spring yet. It's all in the past, kid. No more killing. We'll hop out to L.A. and knock over that bank I cased just before they sent me up. We'll be living on the fat of the land from here on in. Hiya, Jim. How's the boy? Fine. Thanks. Still giving away money on these things? I guess so. Blackie, uh, I don't mean to be crazy, but uh, isn't that Barney Stevens over there? What about him breaking out of prison back east last week? Could be. Let's check on it. Well, pardon me. Will you settle a little bet for me? If I can. Tell her down here, bet me that you're Barney Stevens. You're kidding. You mean I really look like Barney Stevens, the bank robber? Yes, you do look like me. <laughs> and you can save me some money if you'll identify yourself. Okay, if it'll make you feel any happier. I'll be Barney Stevens. Put your hands up. Hey, you won't be needing this. Keep your foot away from that alarm button. You won't get away with this. <laughs> you're a big gambler, but don't bet on it. Come on, get over there. Don't move. Goodbye now. Hit that alarm! to James Fletcher, the sharp-eyed bank clerk who first identified Barney Stevens. Oh, I can hardly wait for Jim to get home and tell me all about it. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. I'll tell Jim what Blackie said. Goodbye. Hello? No, my husband isn't home yet. I'm expecting him any minute. Is there any message? Yeah. If you see him before I do... Tell him he'll be sorry he ever fingered Barney for the law. Who is this? Hello? Hello? Oh dear, there it goes again. Mary, tell him we're just about to eat. Hello? Oh, hello, Laura. No, no. Of course, it's all right to call again. <coughs> what? Laura, you sound strange. Anything wrong? Blackie, for heaven's sake, 
heaven's sakes. I didn't say anything. I'm being sabotaged, Laura. Go on. <coughs> Gentlemen, I'm trying to talk on the phone. And that goes for you too, Whitey. Well, at least. Yes, Laura. Whitey's eating. Patience, mm -hmm. Faraday. This is only the second time around for Laura. And if I know our Mary, this conversation can't go on for over an hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Blackie's right here. I'll ask him, Laura. Bye. And don't worry, dear. Laura had a threatening phone call. Someone said Jim would be sorry he recognized Barney Stevens. Oh, uh, I was afraid of that. Jim's boss. Had to give him the hero treatment. You know, press conferences, the whole works. Well, Stevens has some trigger-happy pals. And from the papers, it looks like Fletcher took Stevens single-handed. Yeah. I think we'd better get over there. Good. I told Laura we would. Well, the roast will be good cold. Well, come on. We're all taking a rain check on dinner. Come on. Come on. Don't try to move. Oh, Jim, the man who did it, I'll never forget his face. If it's the last thing I do, I'll never... No, no, Laura. Nothing. Nothing must happen to you. Please, promise. Forget. Jim, honey. Jim? I can't believe it. Jim was doing so well at the bank. We had everything to look forward to, and now... Oh, why did he have to get mixed up in this? Laura, you feel like telling us how it happened? I ran to the bus to meet Jim, to warn him about that phone call. He'd just gotten off the bus when I heard the shot. Where'd the shots come from? I don't know. A car, maybe? There was a car driving by just then. Did you see who was in it? No, I didn't. It happened so fast. But can you remember the make or model or perhaps the license number? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Laura. Leave me alone. All I want is to be left alone. <laughs> I got a feeling she's covering up for somebody. She's very upset. Well, you can't blame her. Look, we're not going to do any good here, so let's shove off. Blackie, she shouldn't be alone. I'll stay the night with her. Oh, fine. When she quiets down, see if you can get her to remember something that might give us a lead on the accident. Whitey, you stay here and take care of things. <laughs> Listen, I hate this job, but I hate a killer worse. Let's go out and get it. Right. Look, suppose you take out all the mug files on Bonnie's pals and leave me at my apartment in the morning. We'll come out here and talk to Laura again, and after the shot wears off a bit. Morning, Inspector. What happened to you? You look like you've been pulled through a ringer. Yeah. This morning, a committee phoned the mayor. The mayor phoned the chief. You get the picture? Yeah, I'm afraid I do. Any leads? 
Well, nothing you can hang your hat on. I put out a reader on everybody that talked to Stevens. Picked up a couple of them, and their alibis that make you weak. That Barney Stevens is a comedian. We had him in the interrogation room last night for six hours. He had a ball. Let's see what we can do with Mrs. Fletcher. Have another cup, Laura. Thanks, Mary. I can't tell you what it's meant to have you here. Otherwise, I don't know how I'd have gotten through the night alone. Oh, Laura, you're never alone. There are people all around you who could help you. If you're holding something back, I know what I'm doing. That must be Blackie. Hi, Mary. Hi, Inspector. Morning, Mary. Oh, great. A fine watchdog you turned out to be. Well, come on, wake up and explain yourself. Didn't sleep a wink all night. Why, he isn't the only one. Good morning, Blackie. Inspector Perry. Good morning. Good morning, Laura. How do you feel? All right, thanks. Laura, we're not going to beat around the bush, so I'm going to come right to the point. Inspector Faraday has some photographs of non-associates of Barney Stevens. Of course, the man we want may not be among these. He could be. But would you mind looking them over, Mrs. Fletcher? If you recognize anyone in there, let us know, would you? There's one thing I want to make clear, Mrs. Fletcher. If you do identify the man who shot your husband, you'll have police protection until we apprehend the killer. You have nothing to fear. I'm sorry, Inspector. I told you I didn't recognize the man who shot my husband. Excuse me? Sure. No. You're playing it real smart, lady. Keep it that way and you keep breathing. You know what happens to squealers. I'm wrong. Very wrong. I'm ready to identify the man who shot my husband. You already have, Laura. Dave Rubacon. This gets us off the ground. I'm going to take this downtown. Today, the widow of James Fletcher identified Dave Brubaker, whose picture is now on your screen, as the man who shot and killed her husband in front of their suburban home. In the past, Brubaker has been arrested in connection with a number of underworld killings, but has always managed to escape conviction. Police know him as an extremely dangerous customer. You can say that again. and Vernon, a 605. Car 76, go to 6072, Barbara Place, a 35.
what's all this about? What's it look like? The place is on fire. Okay, boys, let's get going. Check, we got an alarm from here. Slim, take the kitchen. Rent you boys take the back of the house. Nothing wrong in here. I tell you, you're wrong. There's no fire here. The man said 1637. What man? What well, a man that turned in the alarm. Turn on the... What'd he look like? Just an ordinary sort of a guy. How about the kitchen, Slim? Everything's all right in there. How about the back of the house? Not a thing wrong, Chief. Well, it looks like you were right. Some people think a false alarm is a big joke. Come on, boys. You know, there's something wrong going on here. I don't buy that false alarm story. It's too pat. I'm going to have a look around. Why don't you pick on someone your size? Just a minute, sweetheart. Don't move. Oh, so you're the rat to turn in the false alarm. Yeah. Pretty clever of me, wasn't it? Now get back in the other room. Real slow and easy. All right, let's go. You heard what he said. Blackie, this man says... Forget what he says. Brubaker! Hold it, Collins. Yeah, everybody hold it. I don't want to kill her here. But I will if I have to. Come on. Now don't anybody follow me, understand? Hey, Collins, get on the air and broadcast his license number. Seven Nara three four three three zero. Hot. Attention, all cars. Be on the lookout for gray and green hardtop, license number seven, Nora, three four three three zero. Last seen heading south from vicinity of Westland and Appian Way. Repeat. Heading south from Westland Avenue and Appian Way. This car is driven by Dave Brubaker, who is armed and dangerous, and who is holding a woman prisoner in his car. Do not attempt to stop him as he may injure or kill the woman. Keep him under surveillance and report in. Repeat, he is armed and dangerous and has a woman prisoner.
have shot you when I got your old man. But I thought maybe you'd take the hint. Keep your mouth shut. I hate to kill a dame. Then why did you bring me here? I had to get out of the house, baby. Past the cops. So now we'll just wear up our account. Your husband put his finger on my best pal. You know what he got. You put the finger on me. Okay. Now it's your turn. <laughs> Someplace. A prowl car traced them this far. I told the boys not to move until we got here. I'm taking no chances with that girl's life. Mary, you stay here. Why do you see that she does? Here, use this if you have to. You can't get out. I got every exit blocked. Good. I told you to stay here and see that Mary didn't leave. Can I trust you at all anymore? Blackie. Stop picking on Whitey. I'm the bad one. I had to find Laura. Okay, you're forgiven. Whitey, you're forgiven too. Ah! Ah! 